one of the most anticipated 3D printing machines finally started delivering to the doorsteps of users like myself and you. Sovol's SV08. The Voron inspired machine, and inspired is used lightly, as it's basically a Voron 2.4, but without the cost and required time to build one from the ground up. But can it cost nearly half as much and still handle just the same as a Voron 2.4? Well, before we start discussing and reviewing the machine, I'm Ed, and welcome to my Tech Talk. I want to start off by saying this is not a review sample Sovol sent me. I bought this with my own money. I placed my order the minute I could with the early bird deal. So my machine quality should reflect what you guys are going to get to. Besides shipping and handling issues, nonetheless, but definitely more on that later. Now the box it came with was massive and heavy. So take caution where you plan on building it because that little cheap Ikea table is not gonna cut it. It was packaged very well. It looks like it could survive a drop or two and still be safe. The setup process was pretty straightforward. Definitely recommend following the instructions as best as you can. I found the wording to be off just a little bit, but that was just me. I did find putting these feet support things, whatever you wanna call them on, to be a hit or miss. One slid into position fairly easy while the other not so much especially the last corner I tried installing. I had to push down a lot harder than I would like to, honestly. It was getting to the point where I thought I was gonna break something. And I made sure I wasn't being blocked by a cord or something, but nonetheless, I got them all in and secured. Installing the top was super easy and helped ease my mind on the feet things, not wanting to go in making the frame not squared itself. Putting the gantry in was simple, but installing the rear screws was a hassle. It probably took me like an extra five to 10 minutes just trying to get one to finally catch. And once I got one started, the rest did start to thread themselves too. So maybe I did something wrong, but I kept trying to reposition the gantry multiple times before it finally started to thread in. When it came time to put the tool head on, I was definitely scratching my head on making sure I had the cable running in the right spot so it wouldn't rip anything out. And it barely gives you an explanation or picture on where to put it so that took me longer than it should have. And once you have all the hardware finally mounted, you have to try and decipher where all the connectors are around the machine, making sure you have them all plugged in. Like look at these instructions. It's so cluttered on what goes where, you start losing track of what's up and what's down on it. If they just took this page and made it two full pages, I felt like that would have made the steps of connecting all the connectors just that much simpler. If I was gonna rate this setup process based on the instructions I sent, I'd give it a three out of five stars. Having to really push on the frame to get the legs to fit just right was a little annoying and slightly discomforting because I thought I was gonna break something, so that cost them a star. Then the second star would probably be the poor instructions. If they just would have put a little bit more effort into the pages, it probably would have made the process just a little bit easier. But no, I had to scan through the connectors page just to make sure I didn't miss anything. They say one hour hassle-free assembly. It took me about an hour and 10, hour and 15. So definitely they do promote an hour correctly, but hassle-free, yeah, maybe not so much. Once it was put together, it was time to power it up. So we grabbed the included USB, installed it and started the machine. Scrolling through the little menu, and I really mean it, the display can barely fit any information three, four lines of lettering, and that's about max. At first, I was just scrolling through the menus, just trying to get myself familiar with it. Found the calibration Z offset, and just let it do its job. And as one would guess, it started to warm up, getting ready to auto-calibrate the Z offset. Now, what confused me was that it did a little test print after it was done calibrating the Z offset, giving you a visual indication that you have a good first layer, which definitely was new to me and cool to see, but I feel like this will get annoying when I just want to calibrate my Z offset and I forget that it even does the test print. Then I send a print just for it to get messed up by that little test print. After getting myself familiar with the machine, I thought it was time to finally start to test the printer. So I loaded up the white PLA and tried the 12 minute bench sheet on the USB also included in the packaging. And my first impressions were, wow. And for a couple of reasons. For starters, this thing can move. This is my first time experience uh, a Core X wire printer in action, so I'm definitely not used to the speed at which this thing can move. It certainly did finish the benching in about 12 minutes, and it looks like a benchy too. Is it perfect? No, 
The first layer looks a lot higher than I would like, and the letters on the back are kind of ghosted, but those are also just kind of minor issues, and I mean ultimately it did finish. Next I wanted to try my own filament. But since the machine is so new, none of the slicers have the SV08 as a machine yet. So either you install the included Orca slicer on the USB they give you, or you can just manually add the Solval printer config files to your current Orca slicer like I did. And again, being so new, they only sent this with two different profiles to try it with, a 0.18 and a 0.2 quality. But hopefully with this printer being fully open source, the community will make some new ones here very soon. Once I got my slicer set up for the SV08, I grabbed a roll of cookie cads, silk unicorn PLA, sliced up one of those articulated whale sharks, cause my kid loves to play with these, and thought the spool would look cool with the color. So I started the print and a couple of hours later, it was done. And once it was cooled off, it literally just popped off the bed. And it does have a little rust spots, don't get me wrong. And I think that's more so being a silk PLA. And I, once again, didn't fine tune the profile they sent, but it did print out and it, you know, works. I also did a full level bed print just to see how well the printer handles its leveling and it performed better than I thought. Now, I was super impatient and tried taking the sheet off as soon as it finished and kind of messed it up a little bit, but I didn't notice uneven lines or markings before doing so. So I will say the auto bed meshing where the print is gonna go is cool feature. Lastly, I wanted to test something that was big and would take up a lot of the print volume. So I decided on a Mandalorian helmet. Being an 18 hours print, it would show how well the printer can hold the big print down and how well the calibrated 0.2 profile they gave us really is. And as you can see, it did finish fine. Some of the supports were stuck more than I'd probably like to. So I have to change that Z distance for the supports and the inside could definitely look a lot better. But this is all something a tune profile can fix. But again, this is what you get out of the box experience. And with all this speed comes a lot of noise with that speed. When this thing is printing, man, is it loud. And even when it's idling, the fans are very noticeable. My word of advice is do not keep this printer near your bedroom at all. All right, time for the good and the bad about the SV08. First, let's talk about the good. You're getting a Voron for nearly half the cost and without the whole build process. I still would love to build one, but that's just the tinkerer in me and that's kind of the stuff I like to do. It comes loaded with a bunch of features like that adaptive bed mesh, the built-in camera for monitoring and time lapses like shown earlier, the clipper web interface, mainstay specifically, the included runout sensor, pressure, pressure advance, input shaping, and the overall speed is great. The included full metal PIE sheet is pretty standard, but what's nice is that the bed has guides for the sheet so you know where to always place it. And then your massive 350X by 350Y by 345Z build volume is also a massive. It also has quad gantry leveling, so you don't need to worry about the four corners since they're all each driven by their own motors. Plus with the built-in dampeners, you don't have to worry about it falling if it loses power all of a sudden. And now for the bad. My printer actually has fitment issues. The front braces do not line up the same. Leg Z4 has a big gap between the frame and the leg, and it really bothers me. And I wonder if that's why I had such a hard time installing it in the first place. The next one's more of a personal opinion, but I'm not a fan of the color, and I think the bottom kind of looks like a milk crate, especially with the handles and all. And also, for the love of God, why are we putting the information, the Wi-Fi information on a USB stick? It's 2024 Solval, come on. It also doesn't save the Z offset even after calibrating the Z offset. It restarts the printer and then resets it back to zero. So that's super annoying, especially for the first layer. And it explains why on that 12 minute bench sheet I had such a bad first layer. And lastly, as much as it hurts me to say it, I think something is already broken. And I didn't notice it until I finished printing all of my test prints. I had it out of home and heard this weird grinding noise. Take a listen.
and once again it's coming from that same z4 corner when i get up close to it it sounds like something is wrong with the gear but once i'm done editing this video i'll be emailing sovo about this and hopefully getting it fixed asap it really sucks that so much is already wrong with my s 8 oh i didn't even mention all the little dings in the corners but i'm sure that was probably from them test fitting and everything they're very subtle but nonetheless they're still there Hopefully with my main issues being this Z4 sign, they can just send me a replacement part and it will just be a quick swap to fix it. But only time will tell. And once they do get back to me, I'll pin a comment to help you see how they resolve this problem for me. It does suck. They only provided buyers with two profiles at the time of filming. And on top of that, they still need some tuning. It does still have some firmware bugs, but that should be your fairly easy to fix as well. Just have to play a waiting game for Sobol to release something. But should you go to Sobol's website and buy one after finishing this video? My honest recommendation would probably to wait for Sobol to work out the kinks. As it sits in front of me, you know, first round machine, it still needs some work. And sadly, mine still needs new parts. So hopefully they can catch up with demand and hopefully quality will catch up with it and once Solvo improves on the SB08, I'll be here to tell you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps support the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.